Hey everyone, and welcome to Tanya Talks. I'm Tanya, and today we're diving into some exciting enhancements with Intuit Sign. If you're looking to streamline your document signing process and make your life easier, you're in the right place. So let's get started. First off, let's talk about what Intuit Sign is. It's a powerful tool that allows you to send, sign, and manage documents electronically. We heard your feedback and updated its abilities to bring you a new and improved version. The enhancements we've made now send you requests using either an access code or a cell phone number as the authentication method. I won't be covering the mobile authentication method in this video as the new access code verification will be able to serve all your customers and pretty much replaces it. As well, there's a new drag and drop ability which lets you obtain signatures on PDFs of non-CRA documents such as engagement letters. Let's take a deeper look at how this new version of Intuit Sign works. If you've used Intuit Sign previously, you're still going to access Intuit Sign the same way you did before. When you're in a return in ProTax, you'll see and select the Request Signature button. Whether you're in a T1, T2, or T3 module, you can select up to five documents and have your client sign. Notice some of the forms are grayed out. In ProTax, only the forms included in your return will be available to select. If you have more than five documents requiring signatures, you're going to need to create a second request. Once you select next, you'll notice that there is a more streamlined look and feel to Intuit Sign. There's no longer a wizard, but one single page with a left navigation pane for you to review the documents, recipient information, customize your message, and set reminders and expiration for the signature link. So pretty much all the same functions you had before, just in a prettier way. You can also scroll through each of these sections so that you can visually focus on the area you're working on. The documents section shows all of the documents you're requesting signatures for. You'll be able to rearrange them and delete them. New is a column for document type. Any CRA documents will have their CRA name. If you upload your own PDF, it'll show as other in the type column. You're able to sort these by dragging them into the order that you want the client to sign them. A little further down, the recipient section allows you to now choose the authentication method. By default, it's now going to allow you to create or input an access code that's between six to nine digits. This access code must be sent to your client separately. For security reasons, you may wanna send this via SMS, calling the client directly, or coming up with a schema to provide the client so they know what the number would be. For example, creating a nine digit code that is two digits for the year of return, three digits for the last three numbers of their SIN, and two digits for the month of birth and two digits for the year of birth. This allows you to send emails to customers without having to customize each one. Who doesn't like sending out bulk emails and reducing the amount of work you have during your busiest season? Make sure you verify the email address is correct in this section as it will pull from the information in the return and requests get sent to this email address. If the information is incorrect, you can quickly edit that information from this screen. How are we doing so far? Having clear and concise visibility helps make sure you're doing what you need to do, preparing it in an organized fashion. Let's continue looking at creating the request and how to automate some of the information being sent to your clients. If you don't have to do it, let the system do it for you. In this new and improved version, we've separated out the message section, which allows you to customize the email message your client will receive. You'll notice a variable tag for the client's name, right about there, which will allow that information to pull in from the return, personalizing the content. This is similar to the original Intuit Sign feature. You're able to see a preview of your client's email experience from here as well. The final section, Reminders and Expiration, has changed just a little bit and is more streamlined to manage. By default, requests will automatically expire after 30 days. You don't want access to sensitive information being available for too long of a period. What has changed is the ability to set an expiry anywhere within a maximum of 60 days. We've also remind the first reminder after sending the request, but still allow you to set a reminder cadence. Once we're finished, we would click the next button. Now that we have all of our settings completed and documents chosen, the process moves into the signature request section, which allows you to view all PDFs and their signature boxes. Now, if you'll recall, we added a document that was our own engagement letter in PDF format. 
If you have any PDFs that are not a CRA document, you have the ability to insert into those document signature fields, signing date, and text for the signer. This now provides you with the ability to obtain signatures from your clients on any type of document as long as it's in PDF format. This will allow you to capture multiple signatures on a 1032, but this has to be sent as its own request since the behavior pulls both spouses' signatures into one document. Intuit Sign is now an all-in-one solution for obtaining those signatures, reducing integrations and increasing efficiency by creating a workflow from within the product. When you click next after this section, it will allow you to review all of your information one last time prior to sending. This is still the same as the original experience. However, once the request has been sent, the got it button will close the request box. Any requests you've made will appear in the eSig tab in ProTax, but we'll get to that shortly. Now that we know what your process looks like, let's take a look at what your client's going to experience. From the client's perspective, the experience is so easy to access the documents to sign. This will be extremely helpful for those clients who aren't tech savvy. They receive a more modern looking email which contains a review link that will then open in a browser and prompt them to enter the access code or their cell phone number depending on which verification method you chose. As I mentioned earlier, that access code replaces the cell phone number and can be sent by email to all of your clients. So no need to worry about that authentication failing. Your clients do not need to worry about setting up an account or remembering any passwords. They're able to scroll through the documents you sent or use the next buttons at the bottom to proceed to the signature fields. When they click on the signature boxes and type their name, it will create a signature. Once the client has submitted their signed documents, then we'll be able to download those documents for their own records. As you can see, this is a pretty seamless experience for your client. There's no confusion about what they need to do and it also opens up your bandwidth because they're able to do more on their own. Earlier, I told you about the dashboard where all your requests will be kept. Let's take a look at that next. You may have noticed a tab earlier beside the FX module called eSig. This is where all of those requests that you sent are stored. As you can imagine, this is gonna get busy the more that you use it. It's why we've created hyperlinks and filters to help narrow down what you've seen. Once the client has submitted their signed documents, your dashboard will show the request status as signature completed and you're able to download the signed documents. Included in the download will be copies of both the signed documents and signature certificates for each document that are CRA compliant for your records. Thanks for joining me today to learn about all of the wonderful enhancements to Intuit Sign. Currently, this feature is included with your ProTax subscription, but as with anything, this could change in the future. Feel free to like this video and leave me comments to let me know what you liked, didn't like, and even suggest topics you'd like to learn about in future videos. I hope to see you again in another session. Have a great day.